Hi everyone, my name is Peter Valentine. I've written two books, The Resident's Voice from a Dementia Unit and The Resident's Rise from a Dementia Unit. So today's video is on how can you gauge if someone with dementia is concentrating? Yes, a very big subject and it takes some time to get the concentration in place. You have to have a lot of patience with this process, but it's worth the wait and it's very rewarding once you get there. So how can you tell if someone with dementia is concentrating? Okay, so when I first started this dementia work big time, full time uh, at this dementia facility, I was there all day only with dementia residents. Prior to that, my work had been physiotherapy with work-related injuries, so it was quite different. Some similarities, actually, uh, in terms of mental tension and mental stress, so that all helped because I was working with OSRSI where mental tension, muscle tension is interconnected. So the mental tension and stress aspect of dementia, I had an interest in and, um, you know, had some experience with the physical side of stress, so that helped. Anyway, how can you tell um, if someone with dementia is concentrating. Now, this takes time to develop, but there's some a few key signs. Um, okay, so when I first started this work, um, I was doing all the traditional activities, you know, that you're requested to do, uh, including newspaper reading um, and exercises, which were good, but the other activities like bingo and balloons and things like that, I really wasn't into, I have to say. And of course, because I wasn't interested, it was hard to get the residents interested. But still, I was trying other things as well. Uh, nothing was really working. <laughs> For the first year, a whole year, pretty much nothing was working. <laughs> I Look, I was really wondering whether it would ever work. You know, I mean, but I actually had this faith, I suppose, or feeling that, some, that the residents would engage. I just, I could see it. I felt it, really. It was, you know, I mean, there wasn't pretty much to go on. I mean, a whole year without anyone communicating. Um, I mean, they might nod their head or shake their head, but, you know, that was pretty much it. <laughs> I mean, they were very, sh I mean, I'm not laughing at them at all. I'm just, you know, it was really such a big, big subject. I mean, a lot of work. Um the thing is, when I first arrived, they were so shut down, so shut off, no confidence, no communication, like probably over-medicated a lot of them. I mean, I wasn't in on that. I shouldn't really say, you know, over-medicated, but say, medicated heavily, put it that way. Um, you know, uh, but whatever the reason anyway, you know, there was very little response. I mean, they were eating and drinking and going to bed and whatever, but it was just all that basic routine. There was no animation or interaction. Anyway, so for the first year, big effort with all these activities I was meant to be doing, nothing going on. But the thing is, I could, st I, uh, probably I'd say after the first few months, I started to see in their eyes a spark. That was the thing, the spark, you know, of interest. No speaking, not much animation in terms of well, pretty much no animation in terms of body language, but I could see from the eyes, they were looking and listening. I could see that. This went on for months. And so, um, encouraged by that, I just started to be a bit more, well, <laughs> I thought that maybe if I was a bit more enthusiastic, it might enthuse them. So I probably went a bit over the top, I have to say. But anyway, I did prepare for each session, a lesson or session, a lot, so that um, bringing forward material that I felt they would find interesting, you know, about the Queen and the Royal Family and technology of their day and the pioneers coming to New Zealand and all the, you know, the, all the field walks in New Zealand and tramping that I knew that the, a lot of them did. And, I, you know, the workshops were pretty full on and filled with material that I knew would resonate with them. Anyway, so they were concentrating there. Well, I could you could hardly call it full-on concentration, activation, I suppose you'd say, more than anything. I could see that they were focused, put it that way, they were focused. And they were looking and they were engaging of sorts. 
but I still didn't know what to, to what level because they weren't communicating. Anyway, this went on for months and um, I was, yeah, I don't know how I kept up the enthusiasm for this, but I did because I like them. I like them. That's what I, you know, I like the residents. I've always loved or liked elderly people. All well, I've loved el elderly people really ever since my father used to get me into the surgery, sitting with them for hours on end, you know, and um, I, I like, I've always liked and enjoyed elderly people that I've worked with in my physiotherapy career. So that was standard anyway. So I kept all this up and, um, and I kept saying to them, look, I want you to communicate, um, please. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? What do you think of the other thing? I'd, you know, it'd be good if you can communicate. It would be good if you can speak. But they were just back in their little monastery cave no confidence and hadn't spoken for months, years, some of them. So they didn't want to speak and say the wrong thing. I mean, they'd been, you know, slapped over the hand. But, oh, mum, you know, why'd you say that? It doesn't make sense. I mean, that's the thing. They've probably been berated so much, you know, and now they're embarrassed that when they do speak, they may say the same wrong thing. And it's much easier just to be quiet and silent in your little cave, dementia cave, which is not a positive monastic monk cave by the way I mean at least if you're a, mon a monk you know you're praying to God and drinking a bit of wine and tending the garden and, and beautiful Greece you know lovely Mediterranean Sea that's a nice life peaceful life happy life you know even if you're in silence which many are for years on end but you can see from their countenance you know that there's that peace and calmness there from their uh, work and their connection with praying. But with dementia, it's just all dementia spin, dementia stress, dementia anxiety. It's not a good place to be. And if you're shut down with that, it's just a stress city, you know? That's why they've got stress on their faces because they are stressed or, you know, pain. It's not pain, but it's stress, anxiety, frozen features, you know? No animation. So I knew that that wasn't good for them anyway. So we kept all this work going for months. And um, actually, to be honest, the first comment that I got was after all this, I wasn't badgering them, but I was just trying to see if I could get something from them. The first comment they said was, um, one of the ladies said to me, we like you. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I was actually really touched. I thought, they, the first comment, they like me. And I like them. I mean, no doubt about it. So anyway, that was established. That's good. We both liked each other. We all liked each other. Okay, that's the platform then, you know. So we started from there. And um, after that, it took another couple of weeks to, for someone else to say something. And then someone else said something. And after that, you know, it just sort of quietly built up. But um, it was the faith in... The faith that I had gauged by the concentration and the, that I could see in their eyes, in their spirit, in their, you know, focus, in their expression. I just knew at some point they would communicate, which they did. <laughs> and from there, all this work started, which I've um, put in a book, books, both books, and... Um, and now all the practical techniques, you know, to be able to help in a practical, positive way to help these people, these people with dementia, be able to concentrate and communicate and build their confidence and create a community. And all these good things have come from this basis of concentration and this work. So that's it for today for the start of concentration and how concentration helps build confidence and then um, extend through to communication and community. I'll be um, delivering and presenting in the next couple of Easter videos. <laughs> so happy Easter and thank you for your likes and your subscriptions and your support. I do appreciate these subscriptions and I do appreciate the comments, you know, very much to be able to get this fledgling little, uh, you know, platform up and running. Thank you.